Lift up your hand. Are you ready for the Rema for the month of September? How many of you are ready for the Rema for the month of September? In the name that is above every day. In the name of Jesus. I declare the month of September 2020 to you by the Spirit of the Lord as the month of worship. Amen. The month of worship. Amen. The month of worship. Amen. This is the month where the power of God will be unleashed in your life. Amen. In this month, your the food extent of your beauty, Amen. the full extent of your glory, Amen. will be shown to the world. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the month of September 2020, the awesomeness of God, the awesomeness of God, shall be seen in your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. There will be a spillover Amen. of the presence of God. Amen. Of the glory of God. Amen. Of the anointing of God. Amen. From your life. Amen. Every second. Every second. Every second. Amen. The anointing that God has given you will produce other anointings. Amen. Will produce multiple anointings. Amen. In this month, in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. This is your month of real blessing. Amen. This is your month of tangible blessing. Amen. At the end of this month, you'll be able to say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are the works of God. September. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As you open your mouth wide this month, God will feel it. Amen. God will overfill it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down for a moment. The month of worship. The month of worship. You know, Professor Semani did what they call, what we call, Expo. Holy Ghost Expo. She looked into my message and got it by the Spirit. How wonderful God is in your life. You know, but before she did that, Dickiness, Alice caught it. I saw her. And then the next person was Dickiness, um, Dick. Uh. Now, what is worship? If you know what has happened here this morning, I am shocked beyond words myself. And the reason God had to speak to this lady was because there's so much in her that she is doing nothing, practically nothing about it. Nothing. Nothing. May destiny, may this world, may destiny not weep over you. Hallelujah. So what is worship? Worship is an act of reverence, you know? When we talk about worship, it's not what you do on Sundays. It's inclusive of what you do on Sunday. Do you know? Do you know a lot of Christians, their worship life begins and ends once in a week. That's in church. Whereas it is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. Worship is a way of life. 
Worship is an act of reverence. Holy reverence of God Almighty. The word in Hebrew is ahaka. Ahaka. Look, I never studied Hebrew, so the way I give it to you, take it like that. I can spell it for you. A H A C H A H. Is pronounced ahoka. It means to depress. It means to prostrate. Did you get that? Did you see the goodness? Alice, do, do that when we started this worship. She just went on the floor. I like people of the spirit. Those are my kind of people. I don't like dollars. Worship being so prostrate, especially in paying homage to royalty or to God. Now, when I was coming here for this service, I wanted to use the Yoruba culture, the Yoruba uh, tradition to try to give you an idea, just a little idea of what the kind of worship that God really requires is. You know that the Yoruba people are from the southwestern part of Nigeria. Amen. What do they do? I'm not talking about this generation. Though. You know how they do it? The ladies and If you want to do break dancing, tell us. That's not how they always done. I remember two years ago when my father came here. There's this lady that used to bring some supplies to my house. The moment I said, this is my dad, she just went down on her two legs. And my dad was, wow. And I said, that, that's how it's done here. They have a rich culture of honoring an elderly person. Never mind that a few of them sometimes <laughs> she just went down. So worship here means reverence. It includes the idea of prostrating to do homage to royalty or to God. I don't know if you have seen um, the encounters of the uh, President Lucien Mbasanjo whenever he visits the um, traditional rulers in the southwestern part of Nigeria. I've seen a few video clips. Here is a three-time president of this nation. He was first the military head of state, then two times civilian head of uh, president. He, irrespective of the age of the Oba that uh, President Olusha Gumabasanjo is going to meet, he goes on the floor. Have you seen him? How many of you have seen him? He goes on the floor. I've seen him do, do, do that for the honor of him. Am I correct about the day? Then, just recently, he did that for the Bagura of Agura, whatever, in Abiyokuta. I don't know. If I don't get it right, please under, pardon me. Okay? Every king, this president does that. Now, transfer that image to God Almighty. That's worship. To prostrate in homage to royalty. To bow down. To crouch. To fall down. Flat. Humbly. To do obeisance. To do reverence. 
those two. You can, you know, the psychedelic way of being worshipped that is done today is we lift up our hands, isn't it? But proper worship, according to this definition, you must do. I remember a few years ago, one of my precious daughters, you know, there was a little misunderstanding and I didn't see her for some time. When she came back and we're worshiping here, she just got She was on the floor. She's late and she no longer was talking about uh, Sister Oriola. Worship. How many times in the past eight months have you thought it necessary to spread yourself on the floor, on the ground, irrespective of what you put up before your God? How many times? It's not just going to be say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. I praise your name. That's not, that's words. That was the, the quarrel that God Almighty had with the nation of Israel. He said, these people worship me with their lips, but their heart is not with me. Any object of your worship must be higher than you. Which means you go on the floor. I know it's a hard thing. I know it's an attitude thing. But it must be done properly. Hallelujah. You stoop. You have to stoop. You have to crouch. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29. First Chronicles. And you know that uh, first Chronicles is in the New Testament, just before Revelation. That's where you find it. First Chronicles chapter 16. If you see Revelation, just come backwards a little. You find it there. Because a lot of times there are people who still will have to go to the table of contents to know where a particular book of the Bible is. I feel sorry for your type of Christianity. May God deliver you. So, the next book to Revelations, that's where First Chronicles is. If you have seen it, First Chronicles, you need to understand, if you have seen it, do help us. You need to understand that worship, you know, what can I say to you? This is the month of psalmist, isn't it? Somehow, this runaway psalmist has lived into the service. As if she was here when the message was going on. You know, God has confirmed this message in so many ways to you this morning. Hasn't has it he? I've not seen her since uh, the center of you for COVID. They didn't send me anywhere for COVID. I was not afraid of COVID. COVID was, in fact, afraid of me. Hallelujah. First Chronicles. I, I, I didn't even realize when I said 10,000. The next time you move like that, if I have a million dollars on my body, I will give it to you. That's life. Oh, you have made me so happy this morning. Especially the true of you. First Chronicles. Chapter 16, verse 29. Read it for me. Let's read together. One, two, go. Stop. Where do you think you are? You know, should you are where? One, two, go. You see, wait. Some people have not seen it. They actually went to Revelation. I'm telling you. Please bring them back to the Old Testament. First Chronicles chapter number 16, verse 29. One, two, go. 
Did you see that? Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bring an offering where? Before him. So, your offering, your prostration, your crouching, your stooping has to be with some tangible substance in your hand. I'm talking about true worshippers. As a matter of fact, prophetess Emani has preached all my message. I'm just going to be refreshing and then we go. Hallelujah. The body of Christ, the Christian community on earth is a nation of worshippers. The only program that God has, the most important of them all, is worship. I said what? Worship. That's his most important program. And it's not restricted to the church. It's not restricted to the church auditorium. It's a way of life. You know, a few years ago, I was at Christ Embassy. And uh, I'm talking about a, a, a long time ago. And I, I suddenly I saw uh, Sinaj come out. After, you know, Pastor Chris lives in uh, this place they call White House. Then there's this other side where the department, the offices of the church departments are. She just came out of there and was about to enter the main auditorium. And I saw her. You know, the difference between her and the others was so clear. It was like day and night. Day and night. There was so much glory on her. Isn't it amazing? That from the continent of Africa, from the nation of Nigeria, God has given us someone whose voice is heard. Not just in this nation, not just in the African continent, but all over the world. I remember in those days, when they would sing without food, there was no money. Nobody was giving them anything. I was there. Michael's mom attended the same school with uh, Kate. Oh yeah, you me. That's Pastor Chris's uh, junior sister, the one in the, the choir director. They attended the same school in Benin. So the first time I went there, she was actually she hosted us. She gave us a seat in the front and we sat down. We sat in front. I mean, before, after the delegates. They used to sing in those days, hungry. But until the Lord returns, she will not, never know hunger anymore. How? By dedication to what God has given her. And every one of you in this place is gifted. Even if you don't know your gifts, the mere fact that the awesome person of God, the Holy Spirit, is in your life, is already there's a, already a deposit of divine gift inside you. It's enough to make you shoot out. But rather than cultivate this gift, you are distracted. You have time for unserious things. You are unfocused. You are not loyal. And you are undisciplined. 
just tell the two of them to sing for you. You you will be so mad. This one will look at this one. This one will look at this one. The two will look at. And yet they can sing. I have them on tape here. They will mess it up for you. Send them do this. As you are standing, they are they are using their eyes to talk to each other. And very recently, Ladi has joined that group. I talk. You just turn like a fool and notice that there's a lot of communication that's been going behind you. And that you could be sold at any moment. And they change, collect it, and give it to you. So the body of Christ on us is a nation of worshippers. Anointed by the Holy Ghost. That's why you have the Holy Ghost. To anoint your son. You see, it's not talent. I know about people who have been given who are talented. I know about people who have been called as service. But all of us, everyone can worship. Everyone is a worshiper. All you need to do is to position yourself in such a way that the Holy Ghost will anoint your song. He will anoint your voice. He will anoint you. And when you sing, I'm not talking about music. I'm not talking about good music. I'm talking about the kind of song you will sing that the Holy Ghost is inside it. And then that song will lift us up from here and take us into the very presence of God. That's the one I'm talking about. We are not rock and roll stars. We are not here for entertainment. Just to worship. I just define worship to you. Reverence. To prostrate to royalty or God. To crouch. To stoop. That's worship. Why you may not necessarily have to do the act, but the attitude of your heart tells so much about the kind of worship you are giving God. And let me tell you, no worship of yours, no matter how sweet it is, no matter how moved people are by that song, that worship, that song will go nowhere except the Holy Ghost anoints it. You can't just wake up from your house and come to church on Sunday and take hold of the microphone and sing for us. It's not your talent. It can be